Amen. Uh, grab your Bibles for me. And we're going to the word of God just as quickly as we can. Amen. Amen. Now, y'all know we stand when we get ready to read the scriptures now. Yeah. This ain't nothing new. If President Obama or Trump or one of them walk in the room, you, you, you wouldn't nobody have to ask you to stand. Amen. But we're reverencing the word of God. I'll be found this morning in the book of Luke. We're going to be in the book of Luke chapter 10. When you get there, please respond by saying amen. amen. Luke chapter 10. Let's start at verse 38, I think it is. Let's start at verse 38, right? I saw, man, I tell you, I saw something in this thing I ain't never seen before. Okay? But anyway, that's the way the Holy Spirit will do you. Verse 38, Luke chapter 10. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, do thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary have chose that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. We praying. Father, thank you this morning. God, for life, health, and strength, God, we thank you for the opportunity, O oh God, to break the bread of life this morning. Actually, to send forth the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy, O oh God. God, I pray, God, that we will have ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church in this season, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. After your word has been preached, you'll confirm it with the signs following. We give you praise, glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Can I share something with you right quick? Something I saw in this passage of scripture that I've never seen before. And it may not mean much to you, but it meant something to me because it caught me. When I first began to read the passage of scripture, it says, now it came to pass as they went. You see, as they went, who went? Jesus and his disciples, right? But now me and probably many other preachers have preached that all of the disciples were in the house. Right? Because of what Mary was doing. Martha was doing. Excuse me, not Mar Mar Because Martha was preparing the meal. But watch this. This is what the Holy Ghost showed me. This. Now what he says, it says, but as they went, it says that who entered? Good God Almighty. He entered a certain village. That means he could have been alone. And then it said, uh, and a certain woman named Martha received yeah. cocktail. You see that? Uh, it, so, so the way we preached this thing for all these years was like the crowd was with him. But according to the indication, Martha received him into the house. He went to the certain village. So you can have God in your house and still not know, recognize his presence. This is because this is a personal thing. You see it? That thing blessed me, man. I'm telling you, it, it, it might not do much to you, but it blesses me when the Holy Spirit can show you things because, you know, he began to show me on last week, I'm getting ready to take it to, a, to, get ready to take it to another place in me. Yeah, and the way you, a lot of times when you start looking at the scriptures in a, with a different set of eyes, God will begin to show you different things. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, man, and, and, and when you expect more from God, guess what he does after you grow up? He'll release it for you. He'll show it to you. Because there's some things, man, we couldn't have handled when we first came into the kingdom. You know, if God would have dropped some revelation and nuggets on some of us, man, our head would have been so big that it had to have a garage door to, to let you in the building. Hey, man, but I, I just thought that was, I, I, I just thought that was just so, you know, just so fascinating to me. I'm preaching a subject this morning. <clears throat> Watch the spirit of deception. It's, it's so simple. You know, I, oh, you're not hollering. Watch the spirit of deception. Let me, let, let, let me show you the word deception uh, derived from the base word deceive. Are you with me this morning? And the word deceive means to believe something that is not true. <laughs> to believe something that is not true, typically in order to gain some personal advantage. Deceive means to believe something that is not true. It says typically in order to gain some personal advantage. 
So this is what the Lord told me. He said the enemy wants to, to us to believe that everything else is more important than spending time with God. Because he's the great deceiver. Can I get any help out there? I might better get some help from our TV audience. Because I can't, y'all won't give me much help this morning. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean you got to understand, man, that 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 the enemy, man, he is 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 so subtle or, or crafty with the way he works or operates. You know, anything he can do from keep you from sitting at the feet of the Lord. That's what he'll do. I want to share something with you. Uh, I'm going to do something. Now listen to this. Because God confirmed this thing for me now. The significance of this passage of scripture is sitting at somebody's feet. This is the significance of this passage of scripture. Okay. You know, oh, you, you see the business in here of Martha. But um, the significance of this is, is to sit at somebody's feet and let somebody educate you. Amen. And so uh, on last evening, I just happened to be strolling through my phone. And, and that song that I just played for you, Sitting at His Feet, it was a song that caught my attention. Okay. And it's not because it, it, I'm going to tell you something. God don't work in coincidence. Okay. Now, I just, I mean, I had. We was going to preach this passage of scripture. Then the Holy Spirit, you know, showed me that song. And then and I read this book last week. Sit down. God wants to talk. Is that coincidence? Or is it purpose? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow this book to circulate. You read it and you pass it on. I got a few of them, but I want them to circulate. Don't, don't don't dog ear it. Don't write in it. Amen. Amen. Pass the book around. When you get finished, you pass it to the next person in the congregation. Not in not in your workplace. Not at the gym. Okay. Amen. Because I'm telling you, this man, this I started reading this book. It's been a little while ago, but I put it down. And then just last week, I picked you can you can read it in, in a, probably a day. You know, if, if you stay on it, okay? But I'm saying, I mean, powerful, man. I'm not just saying this. I, I, I'm a reader. You know, most of y'all don't like to read. And most of us don't like to follow direction either. <sighs> ah, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let it circulate. Uh, I'm going to see who's hungry for it. Anyway, but watch that spirit that comes to deceive us into believing that spending time with God can wait. Because the enemy, man, I'm telling you, listen, now, I want you to really listen to what's been said this morning now. The enemy understands that judgment already has been passed on him. He knows that. Okay, it can never be changed. Because even the Bible talks about the point that heaven, I mean, hell was, this, was only designed for the devil and his angels. That's the only thing it was created for. Okay? But in the course of time, you know, man became rebellious. Amen. And so they folks started, uh, you know, rejecting Christ, rejecting the word to reject the word and to reject God is the same thing. Don't be don't don't you be deceived by what people, you know, trying to throw at you. But he's trying the enemy. He's trying to pull as many people. Away from the kingdom of God as he can or away from God or even uh, the Bible said if the gospel be hid. It's here to the one that is because the God of this world have blinded people. You know, he's he's put a facade up where you can't, you know, your, whatever he might throw in front of you is to keep you from hearing the gospel or obeying the gospel. OK, or you could be a part of the kingdom and then find yourself in a backslidden situation or a backslidden state. Don't you die that way. Don't you die that way. Because, you know, people will go in the book of Jeremiah. I think it's, in, I think it's over in Jeremiah chapter 3. It says that God married to the backslider. Don't take that chance. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Your, 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 your eternal life should be that, that important that you don't want to take no chances of missing it. I'm tell, I, I promise you. 
We're gonna I keep I keep explaining this thing. We're gonna leave this earth one day. Don't know where, when, or how, but we're gonna leave here. The only way you don't leave here uh, by separation, which is death, is if you get caught up in the rapture. Amen. 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 Now, if you don't get caught up in the rapture, then you'll be left here to go through the great tribulation. And you think it's hard now? And you think it's hard? I mean, man, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even try to, I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't imagine. Then you're going to have the Antichrist is going to, he's going to be ruling. You know, if you do, you're going to take the market. If you take the market of the beast, you're going to hell. Yeah. And then people put this out there. Well, you know, if you get left behind, then God's going to take care of his people. Fool, if you get left behind, you don't belong to God. See, you see how the enemy can deceive us? People say, well, you shouldn't call people fool. But if the Bible said that if you got the, the people, the, the, the man that said there is no God, he's a fool. So this spirit of deception, man, it is it is moving. You got you know you got a spirit of error that people are are teaching erroneous doctrine. Man, don't you get caught up in the you know how you were baptized? Just go down in the water. Amen. It's just an outward. It's just an outward statement. It's just a public statement, and it's an outward show. It don't wash nothing away. It really don't wash nothing away. It's just a a, a sacrament that we do. Amen? Amen. You can miss the water, but you better not miss the blood. Amen. That redemptive blood that He shed at Calvary. That's what you better be concerned about being washed in the blood. It's the only way that can wash away. It's the only thing that can wash away your sins. Amen. It don't it don't cover, it don't tone, it does completely it, it eradicates, do away with. Are you hearing me? It's time out for us preachers. Yeah, I'm on Periscope this morning. It's time and YouTube. Hello. It's time out for us preaching this feel good gospel. It's time out for us, you know, telling people they're okay in their condition, in their spiritual condition. We are not okay. The thing that you find yourself doing the most of is the thing that's become your God. I know you don't like it. I don't like it either. I love it. Did you get the, did you get the word deceive? To believe something that's not true typically, typically in order to gain some personal advantage. Amen? You know, I, I found it important to define words because sometimes we feel like, you know, we know what a word means, but we don't have the true, the, the true meaning of what a word actually means. Amen? So in today's society, you know, we're living in a uh, 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 we're living in a time where things are moving all around us. I mean, at a rapid pace. You know, you know, even even in this 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 book right, this guy right here. I met this guy, and I met him let's say three years ago. And this guy was a man that he, plenty of wisdom. His name is Mr. Bobby. I call him Mr. Bobby. Plenty of wisdom. He died, but he wrote this book before he died. He left me a copy of this book. Left me a copy of this book. Left it to me, man. And and um, every now and then I would say certain things to Mister Bobby, and Mister Bobby would challenge me. Oh yeah, he would say, Oh yeah. I said, Yeah, man. He said, Come over here and let's sit down over here to the table. Let's talk about it. And we sit in the bookstore, and there was there's a table over there. We go sit at the, at the table over there. He break his stuff out, man. I didn't know he was writing a book at the time, but man, you talking about so you you talking about powerful. So inside this book. Uh, um, Mr. Bobby began to talk about technology. He began to talk about all of the things that steal our time. He does. And I'm telling you, man, this, this book captivates. You, you don't read something that captivates you and you, you don't want to put it down. Huh? I'm not talking about no recipe. No. <laughs> because, you know, for the most part, man, uh, <laughs> Whew, anyway, let me let me get on out there. So so around, you know, we live in a time now where stuff is moving so rapidly. Everybody wants stuff instantly. Nobody wants to wait. Nobody wants to wait for nothing. You know, if you pray today in this service, you want to answer before you leave. I mean, this is the type of society we live in. You know, I mean, wives, you know, they don't cook for they don't cook for full course meals no more. They put in microwave dinners. Amen. But ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, doing nothing in moderation. 
Not every day. Amen. And then too much of anything ain't good for any of us. You know. But anyway. Y'all gonna help me preach this this morning? I want y'all to be participants now. So every way you turn, something is happening. Can you agree with me? People will even convince you now that you need to keep yourself busy in order to stay focused. That's a trick of the enemy. Now watch this now. Uh, well, I don't, I don't think that anything wrong with keeping yourself busy, but I think the one thing that we need to be careful of is what we're busy doing. You got to be careful what you're busy doing. <laughs> we waste a lot of time doing things that don't profit us anything. Come on now. I mean, when, you know, if you're spending 30 minutes on Facebook and three minutes in the Bible, something wrong with your relationship. If you, now, this is if you say you're a Christian. This, this message right here is not to sinners. It's to those that are in Christ. Amen, somebody. Okay? Because I found it myself personally that when I tried to read the Bible as a sinner, it done me no good. It's like a fairy tale then. Hey Amen. It's like Dr. Seuss or Cat in the Hat. That's what it's like. But when you come into the kingdom and you begin to read the read, you know, read this B I B L E, and it start to take, you know, some some uh, it, it, it's, it's of great significance. Okay, English getting better. All right. So <laughs> I believe that God is reminding us today that we need to spend more time doing the things of God. We always make time to do all the things we desire to do. But when it comes to the things of God, we always either don't have time or we find ourselves making excuses. God ain't saying much of nothing new from pulpits. It's not. I mean, because, because the thing you find yourself, the thing you love, you'll find yourself doing the most. If you lie, if you love lying. You know, you can lie so much that you think you're telling the truth. Yeah. And, and, and the thing about it is, you know, don't let the enemy deceive you and believe it that you don't need to come to a local assembly. You know, if you come on a regular basis, then, you know, this is not for you now. OK, this is for those that feel like I can just have church at home. I can listen to Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jackson, all them. Yeah. OK, well, if that's what if that's the way you feel, then so be it. Yeah, OK. But we need to come to a local assembly because we, we, we need some we, we need we need somebody tangible. We need somebody tangible. We need somebody you I bet you couldn't call TD Jakes uh at 12 o'clock at night. You can't get him at 12 noon. And it's nothing against him, but I'm just I'm just sharing something. I'm just trying to show you the principle of it. You know, the Bible said we need to have somebody local so somebody can give an account for you. Amen. Come on, you got a local job. Your job ain't in Texas and you're in North Carolina. So how can we understand that concept and not understand the concept that we need to be connected to a local ministry? Amen. With some, you know, and, and, and the thing about this is, you know, the Bible talked about this dispensation of time where men will be weaker and wiser. It talked about the time of technology moving and, and folks intellects. People are so intelligent. Amen. But it's gonna come a time when your when your intellect and what you know ain't gonna help you. You know, I don't care. You can have more degrees than a thermometer. You get sick, them degrees ain't gonna help you get well. Preaching, I'm preaching better than you saying, "Amen." Now, so we can get to the point where we think we can fool God. Now, watch this. Now, what I mean is, uh, we really want something from God. We know how to get, we know how to make things, excuse me, we know how to make time for them then. But then God is tired of us treating him like a genie. Well, we think we can rub in the right way and get what we want. Oh, you know, I, I, found, I, I, found, I found, look, I found out that, you know, I found out that, that you can have situations going on in your life. Like the children of Israel, you know, you go up in the Old Testament, and you read about the children of Israel. They didn't serve God like they should have. But every time, you know, he, they cried out, God was right there. And we, it, it ain't nothing changed. We're not the spiritual Israel, but we're just like them. So we learn from them. You know, those patterns that, that they found themselves in, them the same patterns we repeat. Ain't nothing different about us because nature and behavior don't change. Amen. Okay. And God gets tired, of, you know, and then to watch this now. And then in return, when God grants us what we wish, you know, and after that, we get what we want. We go back to that old life of living the way we was before we came to him. 
It's that nature. I'm telling you, man, if you if we don't allow the word of God, you know, to 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 change our lifestyle. You follow what I'm saying? The Bible said in Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your soul. Yeah, that old man, that old man's got to be, he's got to be transformed. Do you follow what I'm saying? You ever seen that? You ever seen them transformers? Robots in disguise. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, they may start out as a car. Amen. You, ever, you, you remember the Incredible Hulk? You remember David Banner? Yeah, you make you make me angry. And I'll... Holy Ghost stand up. <laughs> I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to see who got this. Thing. If you sleep, stand up. Just jump straight up in there. So we, so, so we can't treat God that way, man. God, let me tell you something. God can't be fooled in no time. God already know our motive. Amen. He know our motive. He know why we're doing what we're doing. He know he know if, if we're gonna get something from him and then turn back and go the other way. He already know. Yeah. He might keep you alive, but there's some things he ain't gonna do. It's time now for us to slow down and take time out our busy schedules and give God some quality time. Quality time. Quality. Martha found herself doing a good thing. Well, I mean, I'm saying, well, why? Because the thing about it is now, because I, when I see this thing, a man about, about you know, her just letting him in, and he going to a certain village, and, and her letting him in, why are you trying to cook so much food for one person? Could have made him a sandwich. Huh? I mean, now, he came to this house several, you know, a lot of times. Come on, I mean, why, why this big, you know, this big meal? Why? Because she didn't want to hear the word. Yeah. See, when you don't have a relationship with him, with God, and everything else seems like it's more important than you spending some quality time sitting at somebody's feet and listening to the word. Why do you think God called you to a, to a, 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 a king, the kingdom first of all, and then call you to a ministry to sit up on the, at somebody's feet? What you're doing now is you're sitting at somebody's feet. That's what you're doing. Because you know we get deep. I ain't sitting at nobody's feet. Well, you will one day. You'll be at his feet for judgment. <laughs> huh? And he'll say, "What did hinder you from obeying the truth?" Yeah, we got to listen to somebody now. Come on now, you know. I mean, you had parents growing up. You know, God put them parents in your life to teach you something, didn't He? Uh, did Did God intend for the, the 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 children to tell the parents what to do? So what's wrong with this society? You know, we live in a we live in a society now that that children divorcing parents. Because the great deceiver has deceived folks. Come on, man. This Bible is full of how uh, parents ought to raise the children. They train up a child in the way they should go. And when they grow old, they will not depart from them. Train them up in the word. How do you start training them up in the word? It starts at home. You don't try to, you don't try to diss them. No, you knock them out in public. Amen. You start at home training them and showing them right and wrong. When they get out in public and cut up, there ain't, ain't no time to train them. It's time right then to skin them up. Talking about child abuse. I wish the police would come to my house by one of my young. I tell them, look, if I can't beat them, you take them. And you raise them. I mean, come on, man. Then the Bible says, if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. So why we can't apply the Bible principle to that rear end? Why we can't do that? Huh? We send them to school and want the teachers to raise them. And then Johnny get to school acting out. And then most parents put their children, I'm telling you, man, most parents are putting their children in front of the TVs or in front of these game systems. And they grow up not knowing anything. And I understand that, you know, parents can only teach children what they know, but teach them something. Amen. 
Oh, we don't want to hear this this morning. <sighs> Watch the spirit of deception. God is not looking for any fair weather Christians. As long as, you know, things are going good, we need God. I mean, as long, long as things are going good, we don't need God. But the minute all hell break loose, here we come. Yeah, he's he not looking for visitation rights just on Sundays. We come and visit him on Sundays and he don't see us no more. And I understand, you know, you know, right now we're not having Wednesday night Bible study. I understand that. I understand that. But then there's some of us, we've grown enough now that we can make sure that we feed ourselves. We know we don't on self, you know, you can you're not on a self-feeding program where you know child. You can eat, you can eat on your own. Should nobody have to call you? You read today? You pray today? Nobody, no, nobody called you and asked you, did you, read, did you eat a real meal this morning, did they? Right? Nobody, no, nobody called you and said, you know, you know you need to eat three meals a day if you want to stay healthy. <laughs> Anybody do that? So why somebody got to stand behind this desk with a microphone and whoop us and discipline us and tell us how much we need God and what we need to be doing? Huh? If we was to shut it down right now and go downtown to the streets of Fayetteville and just do some witnessing, how would you do? How would you do? Could you witness to somebody? Could you? Well, there's some people out there, man, they don't want to hear what we got to say now. You know, I remember, with, you know, a few times we went and knocked on some doors and people slammed the door in your face. You still saved after they do that? Get out of my yard! I'm going to get out your yard now, but I need to get you out here in the street. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what we really need to do is we need to uh, make sure we're spending some quality time with God, man. No, don't, don't think you can use God. He can't be used. Okay? He can't be. You know, and the thing about it is, so many times we think we, because we pray to God in secret that God will keep those prayers right there with him. He doesn't. There's some things that God will share with people around. He'll share with people so people will see where you are. Do you believe that? Can I give you an example? If God, it, 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 okay, to give you an example of how, how God will share what's going on with you. Sometimes even when the, the gifts of God begin to flow, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, it comes right out. God it got to come from God to show me what's, what's going on with you, right? Mm -hmm. If I tell you right now, you prayed this morning and you told God such and such and such, you like. But he don't. But you tell me he don't share. He don't share nothing with, with you uh, with other people that you bring to him. What? He, what did he just do? If only we're gonna be helpful because some things we try to keep hid. Yeah, some things we try to keep hid. Man, God to show stuff in dreams, visions. You go in if you pray, if you pray for some time, God brings people faces before you. He does. You know, and a lot of this stuff ain't for you to talk about, just to pray about it. Amen. And then when somebody asks you, don't lie. <laughs> you know, we liars right in the church. Everything goes, yeah, everything going good here. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Because you know really what's going on on the inside of me is going to show on the outside now. You know, because me, me I'm, I'm not, I can't, I don't fake well. When something going on, I got turmoil going on in me. You're going to see it. You ain't got to say, hey, pastor, I know, hey, hey, brother, how you doing? I ain't doing too well today. You know, everybody got to have a title. You think God called me pastor? Okay. You know the thing about let, let, let me say this before I move. The thing about it is, yeah, Jesus' disciples, they recognized who he was. You know, they called him master, they called him teacher. Amen. Mm -hmm. But but it's a time for all that. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a time for all that. Don't come on my job talking about pastor. <laughs> Call me Mr. McNeil. Amen. Y'all don't like that. Ooh, y'all don't like that one. So let's talk about this a little bit. Let's, let's talk about you know what God, you know, what God really wants to tell me today about how to spend some quality time with him. Can I get one amen? 
My favorite scripture this morning, Matthew 6, 33, 34. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, this seek ye first is in everything. First part of the day. Okay? Saying good morning to him first. Reverencing him first. Amen. You know, seeking him in prayer before I get ready to make decisions. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We expect the world's priorities to be out of order because they don't have any instructions. Do you hear it? But we have instructions, but most of our priorities are still out of order. So is it going to be any excuses? Are there any excuses why my life is raggedy? If it is, is it? Man, we got more technology today. You know, I mean, and when you don't understand a scripture, you got so much. You got so much uh, 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 information that you can gather. Uh, I was sharing something with a young man on last week, and he was trying to. He was asking me about a scripture, and he kept going from book to book. In the Bible. So I finally told him, I said, brother, I said, can I, can, I say, can I say something to you? He said, yeah. I said, listen, if you're going to build a house, you need more than a hammer. <laughs> you're going to need some nails, some lumber. So they look at me, you know, you people look at you with a strange look. I said, in other words, you're going to need some reference books to help you with the Bible. Do the Bible interpret itself? It does. But there are, some, there are some anointed people that God has had out there to write some commentaries. And it can help you. But what I, what I would recommend is you get more than one. Okay? And it kind of helps you give you that. It might not zero you all the way in, but then once you get the info, then the Holy Spirit gives you the revo. You get it? Because information ain't, ain't no good without revelation. You know? I mean, because... Uh, you can have all the all the degrees, you can have all of the letter, but you got to have the revelation. Proverbs 4 said, wisdom is the principal thing in wisdom, but about all, about all about getting, get an understanding. You got to understand what you're reading. So many times we'll try to interpret a scripture and make it uh say what we want it to say. You got to keep it in the, you got to keep it in its original text from the beginning. Okay? Let's Here's one I use a lot. Genesis 11. 11 in the, Genesis chapter 11. When talk, at, at the Tower of Babel, you know, folks have used that scripture talking about unity. It's okay to use it, but you make sure from the start you say, you let the people know that their intention was wrong. Okay? Their agenda was not pleasing to God. Because had it been pleasing to God, then God wouldn't have came down and scattered them and changed their language. But it's a good illustration of showing unity because they were with one accord. Okay. But if you want to use a good one on unity, then you go to the book of Acts chapter two, when they were in the upper room. Okay. All of them were tarrying or believing God for the promise of the father, which was the Holy Ghost. All right. Okay. So, so, so let, let, let you know, when we, when we get into the word of God, the Bible, I think it's. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15, you know, study and show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's rightly divide the word. Amen. Don't, don't, go, don't be mad with somebody and take words out of the Bible or scriptures out of the Bible and try to beat people up with them, making them, you know, making them mean what you want them to mean. All right? Just, hey, look, just preach the word of God. If you're mad with somebody, you get ready to preach, just sit down and shut up. Amen. 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 Because you don't want to be angry. You don't want to be up angry. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Didn't it, didn't it say that? But then there's another scripture that said, the anger of man working not the righteousness of God. So if I'm mad with you, we can't have no decent conversation. I need to go somewhere and cool off. Amen. Have you ever found yourself angry? You've done some things when you were angry you shouldn't have done. Did you want to take those things back? Did you? You couldn't. Especially some of the things you said. All them blankety blanks and blankety. You can't take it. 
<laughs> I didn't mean all that. Well, you said all of it. Amen. You know where that come from? Getting that word in you so the word can flush that cussing out of you. Hello. The Bible said bitter water and sweet water shouldn't come from the same fountain. That's what it says. Do you know what that means? You do know what that means, don't you? Bitter water <laughs> is that cussing. Sweet water is just right conversation. So you can't, you can't, you can't have a decent conversation and be arguing at the same time. All right, let's move, y'all. So we got to get out. You know, I mean, our you know, we got the instruction book, and our life is still out of it. Our priority, we still ain't got some stuff in this in, in this right place. Okay, I'm not telling you how to structure your life, but I'm just telling you that when things are going on in your life, instead of calling people, call on Him first. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on, my assignment as a pastor is to is to show you. How to have a relationship with God. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, somebody quoted a scripture this morning, obey God rather than man. That's good. But then God put a man in your the flesh in your life to help you with certain things. Yeah. You might you might call that one that's leading you and you can't get him on the phone. Then what you going to do? I'm going to keep calling him until he answer. No, call on the Lord. Then the, there's so many places in the Bible that say, if you call on me, I'll answer. Jeremiah 33 and 3 is one. Call on me, I'll answer great and mighty things. I'll show you that you know not. Amen. Amen. He might not answer you back instantly, but if you keep seeking him and calling on him, he's going to show up. Amen. And sometimes he don't always tell you what you want to hear. Sometimes his answer is no. Wait. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do I get to know his voice? Keep reading his word. He'll never say nothing to you that does not match the word. Amen. Sometimes you can't hear him. Read the word. Amen. His written word is the Logos. Logos, written. His spoken word. He'll speak too now. But his spoken word matches his Logos. Amen. Amen. If somebody prophesies something from you from God, it's going to match this. I see you with two wives. Glory. <laughs> Devil's a lie. That's not our custom. <laughs> Some of you men, you, you can't handle it. One rib. No spare ribs. Listen to this now. Instead of us seeking God first, we always, we always lean toward our own flesh and desires. Now, in Mark 5, 25, you'll see the story of the woman that had the issue of blood. And if you read that story, you all right? Okay. And if you read that passage of scripture, you'll see something there. You will see where she went to all of the outside resources, all the outside sources first. Then she did. She'd mess around and spend all the money she had. And here she want to hot tell it now to Jesus. We ain't no different. Long sometimes we got money, man. We don't pray, don't come to church, don't give nothing. <laughs> anybody, can anybody identify? But but the thing about it is that mountaintop experience, you don't stay up there all the time. Because there's always a valley that's waiting. Hey Amen. I had I heard one lady tell me one time, I, I was telling about the valley. Oh, God's people ain't got no, no ain't got no business in the valley. I said, Well, I, I don't I don't know why you say that. The Bible says he's the lily of the valley. And David said in Psalm 23, yeah, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I'll fear no evil. Loose up. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? He said, I ride my staff, they comfort me. Amen. Amen. This is the rod of correction right here. Dude, if you if you want some if you want some guidance, follow this. I'm telling you, man. If you get to that book of Proverbs and you read that thing, just you can. Well, I can't tell you that because you'll stop trying to read the Bible as a whole. But get in that book of Proverbs. It's a book of instruction. It'll, it'll show you some stuff. 
You can raise a family out of this book of Proverbs. You can. Oh, yeah. It talks about how the son disrespects the mother. I thought about it. So why is that? Because the mother is the one that raised the children in the house. I don't want. Look, uh, sons, don't be like your daddy. I know you don't like that. That's what that's what we're taught. That's what we're taught. You know, names carry on nature. You know, names carry something, you know. Don't name your child after you. I did it. <laughs> I'm not, come on now, because if you look back and look, if you go back into the Old Testament, seriously speaking, go back into the Old Testament, you look at some of those names they named their children. They had some great, they had some great meaning behind them. Names carry meaning. They do. Don't name your I better not say that. I <sighs> better not say that. Listen to this right here now. The enemy will always send distractions to keep you from spending time with God. Don't talk about the woman that's your blood. Listen to this. I, I, I missed one. First Samuel chapter 30. You remember when David then was at Ziglag? Ziglag was burned. And the people that was with David, you know, David, all of them went to war. You can read that in your leisure. All of them went to war. But when they came back, the city was burned and their wives and children and this stuff was gone too. Well, the people that went with the war with David, they wanted to stone David. They, they were thinking it was David's fault. So what did David do? Besides encouraging himself, what did he do? He sought the Lord. He told David, said, bring me the ephod. Because he asked the question, shall I pursue or what? Now, we don't, a lot of times we don't, we don't, we don't pray. We don't pray. We just go forward. Here I come, devil. He's swinging that line off. Wow. Holy, wait a minute. I got to pray first. <laughs> oh, Lord. So David said, bring me the ephod. He prayed next to the Lord. Should he pursue? And the Lord said, pursue and overtake. But he, he sought the Lord first. He put God first. And a lot of times in the Old Testament, you know, those, those, those wise kings, they, they, they consulted the Lord. Come on, man. If you're leading your family, some of the decisions we make, we got to consult the Lord. Come on, sometimes he might tell us to wait. I know I know we want to do it. I know you want to do it. <laughs> so, but sometimes it's best to wait. I found out my daddy told me years ago, son, never buy a new car. He said, if you buy one, make sure it's two or three years old. You know our flesh, we want to, we want to be the first one on the block. I wonder why you say that. He said, because you get it cheaper. That was just wisdom. So you save thousands of dollars. He said, in the first one they buy it new, they're the ones that break it in for you. Makes sense, don't it? But we still go get them new. Oh, Lord. Watch this now. I'm going to share this with you. In most cases, now, because we're talking about, the, 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 you know, we're talking about this passage about Mary, Martha, and Jesus. But, it, but in most cases, when it's time you, you make your mind up that you're going to do the things of God. You know, I think I'm going to spend some time with God today. I think I'm going to spend some time in prayer and reading. Stuff start happening that ain't happened in years. Little things start showing up. You get ready to pray and the phone ring. But the thing that gets me is you get up and answer it. I was talking to a lady. Talking to a lady on the phone. A friend of mine. And we were talking one night and she says, she says, uh, man, I was on the phone praying with my sister, and my sister was speaking in tongues and all. And said she was speaking in tongues. I said, hold on, I gotta go to the bathroom. Hold on. Now. <laughs> in the middle of praying. Oh, <laughs> I told my wife about that thing. We just laugh. She's speaking in tongues. Now hold on a minute, I gotta go to the <laughs> Boy, you get ready to read the word and then company show up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It just I promise you, it'll happen. You fasting, and then somebody invite you to lunch. You know, you can't just cross my mind. It's the devil. Now, God done told you that you need to fast today and, you know, spend some time with me. And then old familiar, from old familiar friends. Because the enemy, I'm telling you, man, he wanted to see me and to believe it. Okay, is it 1 Kings 13. Write this, write it down. Now, you, you know the old prophet. There was a young prophet and an old prophet. 
God had given this young prophet instructions. I want you to go down and tear down the towels of the, 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 the altars of Baal. I don't want you to I don't want you to eat nothing. I don't want you to drink nothing. I don't want you to come back the same way you came. Well, he messed around there and the old prophet caught up with him on the trail on the on the on the way as he was going traveling. God had already gave him you know, instructions. Look, don't do this. This old prophet come and say, well, look, I'm a prophet, too. Say, but now the Lord, the Lord told me to bring you to the house and feed you. He listened to the. The spirit of deception. Because if God give you something, don't let nobody come behind you and give you something different. Especially if you know you heard from God. He goes to the old, pro old prophet house. He eats. He leaves that house. Wait a minute. As he's eating, then the spirit of God really comes on this old prophet. And God rebukes the young prophet while he's dating. Didn't I tell you not to eat? That what happened to you? <laughs> and the Bible said that the old prophet told him, because you disobeyed me, you will not make it back to your home. He left the old prophet's house. Traveling down the road and a lion ate him up. But we don't want to obey God. I mean, come on now. I mean, if you don't obey God, you ain't going to obey man. That scripture said it's better to obey God than man. Some people don't want to obey God. If God split the roof of this place right now this morning and say, stand up. <laughs> Some of you will still sit down. Who was that? <laughs> really? Who was that, huh? Man, I jumped through that hole. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, we just... But these little things that show up when you make your mind up. You get ready to fast and pray. I'm telling you, enemy, he'll send, he'll send something. Sickness or something. He'll do it, man. That's what I'm telling you. He is on his job. We just can't seem to get on ours. So many times, you know, I, I say this, that everything God invented does what it's supposed to do, except man. I found out the devil do what he's supposed to do, too. He does. He give us a fit, man. He give you a fit sometimes. Sometimes he use you. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm in the right church. Because he'll use any of us now. Now watch this. Oh. Uh, Genesis 2.17. I'm going to go over there for a minute. Genesis 2.17. Glasses give me a fit. If I don't know to leave them down, I'll put them up. Are you there? Genesis 2.15. Let's look at 15. Are you there? And the Lord took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. A lot of people say Adam didn't have nothing to do, but look, he had to dress and keep the garden, didn't he? And the Lord commanded, commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For on the day that thou eat of it, eat it thereof, thou shalt surely die. One of the things that the enemy, he still got us eating of. Is the tree of knowledge. Just ask me how. Through your cell phones and internet. All that knowledge we keep eating. We don't. We, because we don't consume that much of the word. Then we'll find something else to occupy our time. And, 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 and what the world has put out there is knowledge is power. Hasn't it? Mm -hmm. The more you know. And the more power you have. But then they took that from the kingdom in Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, knowing the word of God. See. We need to know more of the word than we know about anything else. Because, you know, the Bible said in the book of Colossians, I think it's 116. Yeah, 116. You know, everything that was created was created by him for him. Things invisible and visible. Things under the earth and on the earth. Everything was created by him. So he's the first one. He's the orchestrator. He's the inventor of everything. Without him, there would be nothing. We don't understand that. 
Then I was explaining to somebody the other night. I said, you got to understand that everything that happened in your life, you know, in most cases, uh, God has a part in it. Yeah, Hebrews 12 and 2 says, looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The author is a what? Somebody say writer. Yeah, he writes you. He wrote your life out. Everything that, let me tell you something. Oh my God. I read this thing and I read this thing in one of the books about heaven. You know, it said, there's nothing that you can do to take one day or add one day to the day you leave here. It's already been wrote. We can't understand that though now. They tried to put Michael Jackson in the bubble, but he left here. I mean, there ain't nothing against him. I'm just saying. You know, everybody looking for this miracle pill and all this. Ain't no, ain't no fountain of youth. Ain't no fountain of youth. You, you know, I, I, <laughs> I remember this uh, this little story guy told. He said uh, he was at the fairground and they had this thing where you take the sledgehammer and, and you hit the thing and the little bell go up and hit the, the little thing go up and hit the bell. He said, well, a couple guys tried it and they couldn't hit the bell. The thing wouldn't hit it. We hit it hard. It wouldn't hit the bell. So the guy was at a little booth. I was like, hey, come over here for a minute. I got something I want you to I want you to try. So the guy said, well, what is it? He said, this is super duper water. He said, you drink some of this right here. I guarantee you, you know, your, your stamina will go up. Your, you know, your strength, you'll feel just feel different. So the guy, you know, he took it and he drank it. And hey, man, I, I, I feel it. So he went back over to that booth over there where the guy had the hammer. He hit it and shoot. Bang! And the other guy tried to shoot. Bang! The man said, well, man, I said, well, you know, you think, you think that water done it? Man, man, it had to be the water. So the guy said, well, let me show you something. He said, well, let me show you something. He said, the only thing we done, well, we took our own label and put on top of some alcohol seltzer water. Because it's always mind over matter. He said, you think it's a super duper? No, it's it no, it mind over matter. See, a lot of times what happens is in our walk with God, God don't do the miracle. It's the faith that you exercise. How bad do you want it? Can you believe God for it? When you come to the altar and somebody, you know, they might lay hands on you, you get delivered. It won't be them. All things are possible to them that believe. It's by faith. You know, come on, we got enough faith in us to get healed, man. Did you know that? I mean, come on. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But you say, yeah, I can't do it. Where did that come from? Your flesh. In most cases, I don't want to do it. Let me tell you something. In order to become an advocate, reader of this word, and partake of it every day, you must be disciplined. It takes discipline. Amen. I'm going to agree to use a story in that book, but I won't because you're going to read it. But I'm telling you something, man. In order to perfect something, you got to keep doing it. It's got to be a repeated cycle, man. I mean, we don't just, you just don't live one day for God. Yeah, going to heaven now. I can live like hell. <laughs> Tell somebody that ain't going to work. You have to endure and endure. And endure. Yeah, this, and this, and this, the Bible says, you know, this, this, his commandments are not grievous. We do everything else. We, man, there's some stuff that's got hard in your life, but you kept at it until you perfected it. I know I can do this. And you kept at it. Did you do it? So why we can't? I can't pray. Why you can't? Do you know how to pray? Oh, it's so quiet. <laughs> you can pray the word back to God. God, you said in your word. Amen. We ain't bargaining with God. It's giving God back what he said. But then you, you know, but you know, you know that a lot of times the Bible said we have not because we pray amiss. Make sure it's the will of God for your life. And then make sure that you live in something. Can't be living like no mosquito around here biting everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can we, can we move? We shouldn't be like Martha. Too busy. We should be like Mary, taking time to hear the word of God. Because the Bible said in Matthew chapter 4, just write it down. 
He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Because see, bread is for the natural man. So if you're born again Christian, what is going to cause you to live in him? You got to eat him. He's the lamb. You know, it's not by, it's not by accident or coincidence or none of that kind of stuff. Why in Exodus chapter, in, in, over in Exodus chapter 12, when God told him to kill a kill an animal and put the blood over the doorpost, what kind of animal did they kill? You think that was by coincidence? Why you want him to eat lamb then? Why would you want him to eat lamb? Because Jesus is the lamb. Joker, I'd be like, wow. That's not deep. It's not deep. We just need to keep, look, that tree of knowledge. He told him, he, watch this. In the garden were many trees. There were this tree, especially two, two, let's talk about the two trees that, you know, that's, that's really important. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge. He tells them not to eat of the tree of knowledge. But he never says nothing about the tree of life. So why you, you, have you ever thought about why he didn't, why didn't say about the tree of life? They already had eternal life, but then something happened. After they ate of the tree of knowledge, he put them out. They couldn't no longer eat of the tree of life then because they would have lived forever in that state. But now we got a chance to eat of the tree of life, which is the word of God. A tree is paper. Right? Is that deep? No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> no, it's going to be one. <laughs> but I'm just saying. But watch this though. In the book of Revelations, the tree of life is still there. It is still, it's still there. You'll see it again in the book of Revelations. So, but eat of it now. Eat of this tree. Eat this lamb. Lamb, lamb, lamb. Eat the lamb. The lamb is Jesus. The lamb of God. Take it away the sins of the world. He's the only one. The only way you don't go to heaven is you don't be in Christ. Okay? All right. So don't, so, so we got to make sure we, we you know, we do, you know, we take time to, to uh, not just eat the natural bread. I keep, I, I keep explaining this. Your natural food, you, you know, you got enough sense to know that if you don't eat naturally, you'll die. So why is that such a big secret that if you don't eat spiritually, you'll die? Why is that a big secret? Why is that a deep revelation that we miss? If you don't feed any, if you don't put water on a flower, what's going to happen? If you don't put water in your body, you're going to dehydrate and you're going to die. Water is life to everything on the earth. Everything on the earth needs water. You need water to do everything. The enemy, watch this now. You don't believe this, but the enemy going to get in the water. He going to get in the water. I don't know if it's going to be during the time of the great tribulation or what, but he going to get in the water because he know water is life. You watch. I ain't, I ain't, got, I ain't got enough time. Now watch this. I want to show you. I want to show you this. Let's, let's go back to the New Testament. Go back to the book of John, chapter chapter twelve. I just want to show you something here. I want to show you a pattern. John chapter twelve, and I'm coming in. I got about ten minutes. John chapter twelve. Look at verse one. Are you there? Then it says, "Then six days." I'm excuse me. Jesus. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, he came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, there they made him a supper. Oh, Lord. And guess what? <laughs> and Martha served. See that? But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Okay. Now, this, then, then Mary, now this is the sister of Lazarus, she took the pound of ointment, spiking it, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with the hair. And the house was filled with the uh, odor of the ointment. Okay. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, uh, son, uh, which, the son, which shall betray him. Why is it not this ointment sold for 300 pence 
and give it to the poor. That's all I'll read. But listen to this. In this passage of scripture, you see the disciples with him. You see that? They were sitting in the house. But over in Luke chapter 10, don't read nothing into the scriptures. Because we do it all the time. I preached that. I, I preached that they were in the house. And the reason Martha was fixing the supper was because she wanted to feed them. But the Holy Ghost showed me it was not them. It was him. You see how we can miss stuff? You see how it's good to, to, to study your own word? You see how important it is to take a Bible to church with you? So when you get there, the preacher ain't just, Lord, find your seat. All that stuff. And you, you might, come on, come on, come on. You in agreement? You in agreement with him? And he preaching, preaching the erroneous, and both of y'all end up in hell. Then somebody asked him, "Man, what the preacher? Boy, I don't know, but he was squalling. I mean, he was coming down through there. I got my dress with it. No, you want to take the time and hear what people are saying? Say amen to the stuff that you agree with." And I'm telling you, boy, some jokers out there that can preach, boy, they bring heaven down, boy. You stand up, boy, that joker be getting it too, boy. And that organ be king, and he be dead on key. <laughs> I don't preach that way. Amen. I want you to leave it with some substance. Amen. I want you to leave it with your pockets full. <laughs> I want you to leave it with your stomach stuck out. <laughs> Y'all, come on, wrong one this morning, man. <laughs> she must be having a good day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so let's make sure. But listen, to this. here's my point here. Every time that you know, every time that Jesus showed up at the house, Martha was distracted. That spirit of that spirit of deception, it, it can, you know, it'll distract you. She, 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 she's worried about feeding him. But he wants to feed her. You know? Sometimes when God show up, he wants to do something for us. Instead of us doing something. Because a lot of times we're in a service. We're trying to get him to show up and he's already here. You know that, don't you? Do you know that you can conjure up a spirit and not be the Holy Spirit? Did you know that? Because I'll tell you that that familiar spirit. It's real close to the Holy Spirit now. It is. And then, and then people can prophesy. Speak to you out of that familiar realm. It's because it don't take nothing for you to come up. And somebody tell you some stuff about your life if your spirit is open. It, it don't take nothing. They can look right down and see. Some stuff you can't hide. You're going through something. And you ain't. Okay. All right, let's move on. So we got to let's make sure because we understand that you got you got tweet you got Twitter out there, people tweeting, twittering, Facebook, uh, uh, FaceTime, uh, Glide, Marco Polo, yeah, it's a lot of stuff about all these apps, and folks want to talk. They talk more on these apps than they do to God. So many, you know, when people, so many people are so used to other people coming to their aid, you know, they just put all their situations and all their business out there, out there on social media, social media, everything that going on in their life. When I first heard about social media probably back in 06, 07, 08 maybe. I heard some girl post out there where she slapped her mama. I said, yeah, you see on Facebook with such such slapped her mama? I said, my God. I'd have, boy, I'd have, got, I'd have got to her. But if people just post anything, man, anything. People out of town, they post it. I'm out of town, and then somebody go break in the house. How smart is that? Then you come back, somebody broke in my house. Who done it? Anybody could have. Then the police officer asked the person, "Did anybody know you was out of town?" Huh? <laughs> Everybody did. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, case closed. Can't file no insurance, no nothing. Well, you probably didn't have none. All right? Huh? Look at, look, look, look at Matthew. Look at Matthew chapter 24. And I'm, I'm coming in. I promise you I am. God Almighty, Jesus. 
Coming in. Matthew 24. Verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage until that day that Noah entered the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took all them away. And so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one be taken, and the other be left. Two women should be grinded in the mill, and the other be taken, and the other be left. Watch. I ain't got to read that. See, but just, you understand what I'm saying? So now is the time to get serious. You know, if you got a relationship with God, get more serious with God. You know, cut some of the other stuff out. You know, min minimize it. And maximize your time with God. I ain't telling you nothing that, 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 that any other any other preacher that, that, that can look that the Bible said it, it talks about the sons of Issachar. Said they knew the times and seasons, they knew when to do certain things. Okay? And there's a spirit. The, the, the Issachar was and uh, uh Issachar was one of Jacob's sons. He's one of the twelve tribes of Jacob. These guys was wise. They, and if you want wisdom, God will give it to you. The Bible said in James 1 and 8. If you lack wisdom, ask of God. He'll give you wisdom. But you got to follow the wisdom or the advice when they give it to you. Don't spend everything you got. Got to put something back for rain. It's going to rain. And what the old folks said, I didn't know what they were talking about. It's going to rain. Put something back for rain. What does it mean? When times get hard, that's rain. The umbrella ain't going to hold that trouble back. They ain't the kind of rain they're talking about. They're talking about trouble. They're talking about tough times. Amen. You know, you I bet you know young folks now they don't have what you call deep freezers. <laughs> deep freezer. No, we eat what we got. I know it. Come on, you got to store something away. Then the Bible say, learn from the ant. Have you ever took a microscope and watched the ant? Have you? I mean, come on, get your microscope one day. I'll take it out of your busy schedule. And get down and watch and get a, micro, a microscope and watch. I said microphone. Okay. Get a microscope and watch them. They're working together, man. They're putting stuff away. They they coming together and helping each other. I seen one of them trying to drag something, boy. He couldn't get it. Said, hey, this man, get yeah, him. <laughs> <laughs> big crumb. They had a big crumb. They're taking it to the they were taking it to the storehouse. Then look up at me tomorrow. We're gonna eat this later on in the winter. When you working. <laughs> Learn from that. It's in the book of Proverbs. They talk about a lot of different, uh, you know, badgers and talk about a lot of different animals and species. Man, it does. It's just wisdom. But you got to get revelation from them. God. What are you telling me? To be like that? I can't be that small. No fool. Learn from how you're doing it. So, in the times of Noah, so, so, so here's the thing. Don't let the enemy distract you to believe that you can do all this stuff and forget about God and you'll still have time. First things first. First things first. Keep God first. Don't forget about God. He just said in the Old Testament, now when the Lord bless you, don't forget about him. And what he always say? Yeah. Okay. We shouldn't follow the pattern of the way of the world. They on their way to hell. You going to? They're thinking about God. Are they having wild parties? Come on, going to clubs, hanging out on the street corners. Hey Amen. It's the pattern of the world. They ain't concerned about God. They think they just got enough time to do what they want to do, and, 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 and God will just understand. Sometimes that's what we feel. Yeah. I got one whole minute. My God, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge God or him, and he shall direct thy path. When you need direction, you got to trust him. You can't lean to what you think. You got to acknowledge him in all your ways, and he'll tell you what to do. Amen. I close on that. Amen. And clap your hands.